run away from people who teach this. Are spiritual coverings true? Are they biblical? Is there any passage in the Bible that even relates to someone having a spiritual covering? Well, where this comes from and why we see this is because there are people that zealously want to have people look at them, follow them, be devoted to them, fear them, honor them, even pay them to have authority over and in their lives. That is not scriptural. Now, is there some authority that is given to elders, to pastors? Sure there is, but it only goes to a certain extent. But these are people that want to be seen by the world, particularly those that follow them, as somebody they need to follow, bow down to, worship, come after, uh, obey. This is where it becomes not only unbiblical, but it becomes dangerous and demonic. One of the passages where they come from, uh, where they get this from, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as well as another passage. But in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, but I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man and the head and the man is the head of every woman or of a woman. And God is the head of a church. Every man who has something on his head while praying, prophesying, disgraces his head. But every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her head. Now, where this where this leads to is there's this argument that women should be able to preach and to pastor if they have a covering. Well, you couldn't be pastoring uh, if you have a covering because that, nece that necessarily means that you don't have a covering. You are the one that's doing the covering according to their definition of a covering. We'll come back to the definition of a covering in a second, but this is not speaking about having someone in authority over you to allow you to do certain things. What this is speaking of is a woman making sure that, especially in that day, but even today, making sure that there is some sort of protection over her. This is for a woman. Notice this is for a woman in the past. It's not talking about a man having a covering, which tells you how unbiblical this practice is because it, it extends not just to women, but to men in today's practice. But this is to make sure that she has authority, that she's not out there by herself. If she's unwed, then her father, that is assuming he's there, is her covering. And if she's uh, married, then her husband is. Her name how we do this today is her name would be changed from uh, the father's last name to her husband's last name. She takes on a new name, which means she takes on a new household. She's not out there usurping authority because Paul tells us that a woman is not allowed to teach or to usurp authority over a man. And so this is a way that she is to signify, especially in that culture, that she is not trying to usurp authority. Now, what happens is you see people today who especially, especially oftentimes, and this is where it's also going in a gray area or in an area that it should not go in. When you confront certain people and you challenge them, someone who is apostle so-and-so or someone who's prophet so-and-so or all these different titles, you ask them something, one of their responses back is, well, who's your covering? Who's your spiritual covering? Who's your, who's your leadership? Who's your accountability? And my response is, who's your, be quiet. Because what you're doing is you're deflecting oftentimes to get folks not to follow through with the line of question that you've been asked. That is, why do you why do you teach certain things? And that brings us something. Remember, we're guided by this particular passage in 1 Corinthians 4, 6. He says that now these things, brother, and I have figuratively applied to myself and Apollos for your sakes. Look what he says. So that in us, you may learn not to exceed what is written, not to to exceed what is written so that none of you will become arrogant in behalf of one against the other. Well, that's what's happening. People are people are exceeding what the text says and coming up with this notion of having a spiritual covering. And so they'll say, well, uh, I've got a spiritual covering. We don't know who this, in many cases, who their particular spiritual covering is, but it doesn't matter because the Bible isn't saying that a man or somebody is a covering over you. Um, now, should we be accountable to our local church? Sure, but we're not just accountable to our local church. We are not just accountable to our local church. We are accountable one to another. As a matter of fact, think about the very first church. Think about what happened then. They devoted themselves, the Bible says, continually them, devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's the word of God, and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. That's what we align ourselves with. That should be, if you want to say covering that, we are accountable to each other.
if one gets out of line, we have the right, we have the biblical right to go and say, hey, I disagree with this or I agree with that. Could you explain this or to rebuke, rebuke someone or to reprove someone, to admonish someone? We have the right to disfellowship someone. We have the right to break fellowship with someone who was ungodly or a church. If spiritual covering were a thing, you couldn't even leave the church. You would have to uh, humble yourself and submit yourself to an ungodly person. And you don't get the chance, the right to even question that person where they are ungodly or not because they are your spiritual covering. This notion that you can be someone's spiritual father like Paul was to Timothy. Paul was an apostle. So we don't have that today. We don't see that being spoken up today. We see that here in also Ephesians 5, 23. Notice what he says. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the, of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be to their husbands and everything. Now, notice what he just says, though. Who are we subject to? To Christ. So if you want to find out who our spiritual covering is, look to him. Turn to the scriptures. That's our accountability partner. That's our covering the word of God. And that's how we judge each other. The problem is we've got people nowadays who want to do, as Jesus says, uh, these leaders they want to rule over people. They want to uh, they want to lord it over them. They want to uh, hold their authority, their supposed authority, over people. But he said, it is not this way among you, verse 26, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be a servant. We have far too many people who want to be something special, who want to be something great, and one, have authority, exhibit authority, implement authority, use authority, and oftentimes abuse the authority over people who tend to be weaker, either emotionally, mentally, and certainly weaker in the scriptures. If you have a strong foundation in the scriptures, you one, won't allow someone to, to fool you with this false notion of spiritual covering. There just is no such thing in the Bible. And if you have a strong foundation of it, you wouldn't let someone treat you or mistreat you in contrary nature to the Bible. The Bible tells us how we ought to behave. And so when someone says, well, who's your covering? Well, you can say you're pastoring, your pastor's your covering, but really what you ought to say is the word of God. Oh, by the way, you're my covering. You are the one that, that is to make sure that I'm doing it right. You, my friend, you're my covering. You're the one that has my back. You're the one that protects me if I'm in need. You are the one that checks me if I've done something where I need to be reproved, where I need to be rebuked where I need to be exhorted with teaching, with great teaching and patience, all long suffering, constantly doing so. You are the one that ought to refute me, but you also are the, are the one that ought to come in love and cover me in love. We think that if covering is to discipline someone or protect someone, it's also to love someone. But again, what we're speaking of, we are confusing covering with fellowship. We are confusing covering with being part of the church, being part of the body. Again, look at how the first church was. Now, does that mean that pastors don't have any sort of authority? They do. Now, when we say covering, people oftentimes are thinking about someone who is to be over you and around you, to keep you safe and to protect you. No, what they're describing is the church, the fellowship, the body. The body's job, just like my job to them, one towards another is to protect, to admonish, to comfort, to love to look out for, to defend, and to correct, but it goes both ways. So there's no one that can correct me that I can't correct also. There's no one that's above me, but we are all equal. The one person, as Paul says, that we are subject to is Jesus. Now, do pastors have authority? Sure. But look how Paul, or I'm sorry, Peter says they ought to exhibit that particular authority. He says in 1 Peter 5, he says, shepherd the flock of God among you exercising oversight. So is there some oversight? There is oversight, but look how it's ought, it ought to be um, distributed, how it ought to be shown. Not under compulsion. You mean you can't make someone do something even though you have oversight? Correct. But voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sort of gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be an example to the flock. Remember, Paul, Peter says, be holy even in our behavior, not just our speech, but in our behavior. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ or imitate me as I imitate Christ. That's how we do so. That's how we get folks to look at us and, go, and voluntarily subject themselves. You don't have the right to make someone do anything they don't want to do. If they're going to be disobedient, 
and you want to exercise, the church wants to come together and exercise church discipline, fine. Nothing wrong with that. But that's how you ought to do it. The problem is we've got too many pastors, too many leaders who don't qualify to be leaders. And so they show how much they are unqualified by not sticking to the scriptures. Remember, we don't want to exceed what is written. So when someone tells you that uh, there's a such thing as spiritual covering, leave that person alone. Because I can promise you this, that there are other questionable teachings of theirs that they also depart from the scriptures um, in order to make their point. Paul says to Timothy, an overseer then must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, temperate. These are examples people can look and follow. Prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. This is where part of the problem comes in. Not addicted to wine or pugnacious, but gentle, peaceable, free from the love of money. And here it is. He must be one who manages his own household well, doing it well. Kalos, that is, this is the adjective describing how he manages his household, keeping his children under control with all dignity. And here's the point for that. But if or if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? So he has to show how he manages his household. And he's not being abusive, authoritarian, uh, uh, a dictatorial authoritarian. No, he is doing so in love and as an example, as a gentle leader. Now, does that mean that he didn't, he can never be stern or strong in correction and rebuke? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But someone will take a stern and strong correction because they also know that you love them. That's what it means to be a shepherd. Uh, and so what should we do when we have those sorts of leaders? The Bible says, uh, Paul says to esteem them highly, but we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give instruction, that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work, live in peace with one another. Now, he's not telling them to subject yourselves in a way to where they have authority over you uh, in, a, in the sense these people are talking about this covering. They do have, look what he says, who diligently, what, what he said is appreciate them, those who labor among you and have charge over you and give you instruction. Now, this charge over them means doesn't mean they're the boss of you. You're not my boss. What you are is my brother, not my boss, but you are my brother, and I'm listening to you and your instructions. How? Your instructions in the Lord, your instructions in the work that you do with the word of God. And so that's not how it should be in us looking for someone who is our spiritual covering. Uh, who was who was Paul's covering? Well, the Lord was. Who was James covering? Well, the Lord was. Even Timothy, even though Paul considered himself to be a spiritual father, Paul still let us know that Jesus is his covering. He says, now look at this in 1 Corinthians 3. He says, yet for you are still fleshly, for since there is jealousy and strife, you are not fleshly and not walking like mere men. So now notice how he's putting this. You are fleshly if you are after one person, whether they forced you to do so, whether they tricked you, whether you voluntarily went that way. He says, for one says, I am of Paul and another, I am of Paul's. Are you not mere men? So notice what he's saying here in verse three. This is very important. He says, what then is Apollos and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believe. These people that they want to be your spiritual covering whoever this pastor is, this preacher is, whatever, they're supposed to be servants of the Lord. That's all they are. Now, they can lead you in following after Christ as they are following after Christ. But he says, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one, I planted Apollos water, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God causes the growth. Look at verse nine. He says, for we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. No, we are uh, co-laborers in the ministry. We are accountable one to another in our love, in our admonishing, in our protection, uh, in our growth, in our fellowship. All of these things, we do this together. We don't have a spiritual covering. We have Christ. That's what we have. And anyone that tells you to look to your spiritual covering is someone that is, whether they intentionally do it or unintentionally do it, they are telling you to look not to Christ, but to some man. Again, anyone that wants you to have a spiritual covering, ask them for the scripture. They can't. And then let them know as you, their spiritual covering, I'm admonishing you to do what Paul says. Do not exceed what is written. Amen.